Your local McDonald's owners across Washington, D.C., Greater Baltimore, and Eastern Shore are committed community members who all celebrate the diversity of the neighborhoods that they serve. Black History Month is a special time to spotlight the many African-American and black individuals and organizations that have contributed to our area's growth and development. McDonald's sees, supports, and celebrates you now and all year long. Dogs are an integral part of many families, whether as a cute pet to cuddle up with or an excellent running partner. But sometimes their job requires more than just being a best friend. Service dogs have been mentioned throughout history, but were first legally recognized in the U.S. when the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed in 1990. These dogs are in high demand, not only because more than half of candidates don't complete their training, but they're also trained to serve very specific conditions. So a service dog that's trained, for example, to treat a patient with PTSD, they're trained to turn on a light, to pull a sheet off a bed, to jump in bed and put pressure on the chest of that veteran that might be having a nightmare or a PTSD flashback. A veteran with certain disabilities that might be in a wheelchair, they're learned to go into a grocery store, how to provide the credit card, to swipe it over the credit card counter, and to put it back into the sort of the bag that's on the chair. They're learned a veteran in a wheelchair drops an item, keys to get into a car, they can pick them up and fetch for that veteran. So they're giving specialized skills once they're paired with that veteran. That's James Skank, CEO of the PenFed Foundation. While service animals are valuable to all people with disabilities, Skank's nonprofit works specifically with military members and veterans. These dogs are able to be helpful shadows that increase the owner's independence while still keeping them safe. We've heard firsthand from four of them that these dogs literally saved their lives. One of the veterans had a son with special needs and had a wife who had to provide for his care almost full time, and it was really wearing on him. After he received the service dog that was able to fetch his cane, bring him items, bring him his medicine, his wife was able to go back to work and have her own life again and have her own independence. He's been able to go to the grocery stores, get in a car now, re-engage with society with his own independence. He really looked us in the eye and said his life was in a really bad place. This dog changed his life. Service animals have a wide variety of skills for both physical and mental disabilities. Kirsten Hawley is a U.S. Army veteran who's been diagnosed with PTSD. Before she got her service dog, Dean, last year, she was more focused on surviving rather than living. Life was rough before Dean. I avoided going out into public. I, when anyone came to the door, I would hide. I was really withdrawn and yeah, life was just really rough during that time. Service dogs are typically trained for two years before being matched with an owner. This extensive schooling means that they can be an immediate help when placed in a home. Holly says that having Dean made such positive changes in her life almost instantaneously. It was amazing getting to know his temperament. He's really goofy. So learning to get to know him a little bit better, how we could work together as a team, going into public, I was less anxious and less stressed. I wanted to go into public, so that was a big change for me right off the bat. And yeah, he just became my shadow right away, and so he was always with me, which was really helpful. Holly says that when they're in public, one of the most helpful tasks is having Dean stand in front of her to create space. That's one thing that will increase my anxieties if people are too close to me in a public setting. So the front command will create space and kind of keep me in my own little bubble in that sense. So in public, that's one of the like widely used commands that he and I work with. And when the pair returns home, Dean's job isn't finished. In fact, he works through the night making sure Holly isn't suffering from traumatic nightmares. So he's trained on how to pull the covers and the sheets off of me if he sees me moving around in bed, you know, from a nightmare. And then afterwards, he's trained in nightmare recovery. And so he just basically kind of snuggles with me and that helps to reduce stress and anxiety from the nightmare. Aside from Dean's specific skill set and commands, Holly says that he helps in even the simplest ways, such as being a distraction from her anxious thoughts. 
when we go out into public, my thoughts are on him and less on things that will be potential triggers for me. And then also he's just, he's a charming dog. Like he just attracts a lot of attention. And so, and he likes to just show off in that sense. Like he's just, he kind of has like a little prance that he does when we go out into public and it just makes you smile. It's hard to be anxious or stressed, you know, in that setting when, you know, you see his little prance and when my thoughts are on the present, that's like the biggest help for me for sure. When they're in public, Dean's service dog Vest lets everyone know he's on the job. However, when Holly's at home with her two sons, Dean gets the best of both worlds. I will explain to the kids that, yes, he is a dog, but he's also a service dog. So when he, his vest is on, they know that he's working for mom. But when he's home, he's also still working for me. He's still on duty in that sense. <laughs> so the kids know that mom is the one that will give him commands and mom is the one that's, you know, in charge of what he does. So they will reward him, but it's usually after I, you know, reward him. So they will kind of be the echo in that sense. But yeah, the biggest thing is the vest, you know, his vest is on or his vest is off, but they love to play fetch with him and just love on him, which is also, you know, he loves too. <laughs> so it's great. Holly was first introduced to the therapeutic effects of animals when she was in Afghanistan. Before she decided to get her own service dog, she dipped her toe in the water by volunteering to raise a dog for Canine Companions, a nonprofit that trains service dogs. One reason why the training takes a couple of years is because, as puppies, the first 18 months is dedicated to socializing the animals. Volunteer puppy raisers are tasked with getting each dog acclimated to all kinds of environments. They wake up in the morning, they brush their teeth, the dog is there with them. They bring it on either a metro or in a car to the office. They socialize them through different meetings at the lunchroom, in the staff room, in a boardroom. If they're taking a trip, that employee, they fly on an airplane or they go on a train or a bus with the service dog in training. They bring them to a rock concert. They're exposing the dog to many, many different stimuli throughout the day over 18 months. They teach them some basic commands, but it really is socialization. For Holly, being a puppy raiser forced her to get out of the house. He went to church with me. He went to different events for the kids. And I noticed the impact that he had on me and just how much confidence he gave me while we were going into public and how much he reduced my stress and anxiety. So that was another reason why I, or another, I guess, insight into a therapeutic partnership with a dog. After the 18 months are up, the dogs go back to be trained for six months for specific disabilities. They can learn up to 50 commands and skills. And though it's a necessary part of the process, it can be hard for the puppy raisers to let the dogs go when the time comes. We tell all the puppy raisers, this is part of your life for the next 18 months. It's going to be with you when you wake up. It's going to be in the crate with you next to your bed when you go to bed at night. You are really become one with this dog. And that's why it's so hard at the end of the 18 months to let it go, because that bond is really formed. But those who raise the puppies realize they're going to save a life. They're going to change a life for the better. There were obviously lots of tears shed, <laughs> um, but knowing that he is going to be able to help someone the way Dean has helped me was, it's a no brainer in that sense. Like, and especially since he's going to be paired with a veteran, I really feel like that's like the highest honor that as puppy raisers, like we can have. So it's really exciting knowing that he's going to be matched with a veteran and then helping someone in the way that Dean helps me. So it's an honor, really. You can find more information about James Skank, Kirsten Hawley, and all of our guests on our website, RadioHealthJournal.org. For more behind the scenes, follow Radio Health Journal on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Our writer-producer is Kristen Farah. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Greg Johnson. Hey, it's your girl Lonnie Love, and this segment is brought to you by Metamucil. Are you ready to take charge of your digestive health? I know I am. That's why I'm teaming up with Metamucil for their two-week challenge. Metamucil's 4-in-1 fiber helps promote regularity. Unlike many fibers, Metamucil's psyllium fiber gels to trap and remove waste from your digestive system, helping you feel lighter and more energetic after just two weeks. Try the Metamucil two-week challenge today. Learn more at metamucil.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. 
Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. Anytime you use a different tool, it naturally is going to change the way you think. Sometimes just because it speeds you up or slows you down, sometimes because it forces you to organize information differently. Why should students write their notes by hand? But first, do twins lack a sense of individuality? I was talking to this little girl, a twin, and she goes, it really hurts my feelings that my friends don't care enough about me to know who I am. All that and more on Radio Health Journal. I'm Elizabeth Westfield, host of Radio Health Journal. If you enjoy listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. Bessie was getting press, but it was only from the black press. White press was not interested in Bessie at first. Meet the first female pilot you've likely never heard of. Then. The space shuttle was always an experimental vehicle. And those of us that worked in the shuttle program were well aware of the fact that there were certain risks involved in every flight. The risks and rewards of the flawed space shuttle program. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Viewpoints on your favorite radio station, iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you for joining us this week and every week as we break down the science stories you need to know. You can find all of our past segments and guests on our website, radiohealthjournal.org, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and X for daily content. And tune in next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal. Freedom is all about choices. And while there is only one Jeep brand, you have the freedom to choose from an epic lineup of Jeep brand vehicles. Hit the trails with the versatile classic, the Jeep Gladiator, or experience the wild in style with the sophistication and comfort of the Jeep Grand Cherokee or Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE. Looking for a more immersive experience? Let nature come to you in the open-air Jeep Wrangler or Jeep Wrangler 4xE, America's best-selling plug-in hybrid. Whatever you choose, adventure is just one drive away. Visit Jeep.com for details. Based on 2022 CYQ4 sales, GD Power retail sales data, Jeep is a registered trademark.